This, for me, is a mobile phone. If you're in America, you'd probably think it's a cell phone, or if you're very brand conscious, you'd call it an iPhone. But in Switzerland, it's a handy. Now, before I came here, I thought handy was an adjective, meaning convenient. I, of course, realized once I was here for a while that I was completely wrong. It might be an English word, but the real meaning is it's a noun and it means mobile phone. It's a very common example of how the Swiss use English in everyday life. Switzerland is famously a multilingual country. It has German, French and Italian as its three official national languages. But English pops up all the time. This can be in the form of English words like sandwich, online, marketing, comeback, all of which have exactly the same meaning as in English and Swiss people use them as we do in English. Or it can mean English words like handy, which have a completely different meaning in Swiss English or Swinglish. And I've picked a few of my favorite examples. So here is old timer, which for me is an old man and for my father as well. And he learned the hard way what the meaning of old timer was in Switzerland when a rather lovely young lady said she liked riding old timers. Of course, she meant she liked riding around in vintage cars. Then there's pudding, which in British English is just a generic word for dessert. They're synonyms. In Switzerland, it's a very specific dessert, uh, like a blancmange or a jello made with milk, a bit wobbly, a bit disgusting, really. Anti-baby pill does exactly what it says on the packet. You don't really need to have any more information than that to know what the pill is for. Or there's no name, which in English we would probably say he's a nobody rather than he's a no name. But even on the national news here, they, when Roger Federer was beaten once by a no-name, as in a world tennis player no one had ever heard of before. And Roger Federer probably has a trainer in English, or maybe he wears trainers, tennis shoes or running shoes. But in Swinglish, it's neither of those things. It is the bottom half of a tracksuit or jogging bottoms. And one of the best examples is drink, which isn't just a generic word for something you drink. It is in fact uh, semi-skimmed or low-fat milk in Switzerland. And the reason it's a good example is every carton of low-fat milk has drink written on it. And they use that to overcome having to translate everything into three languages. So you don't want low-fat semi-skimmed milk with 2.5% fat written in three languages. So you just call it drink. So it's at once trendy because it's in English and it's very helpful because it gets over the language barrier. Another word is wellness, which I didn't really know was an English word till I came here. We don't use it that much in English. Here it means uh, going to a spa, so you have a wellness weekend or a wellness hotel. So you go and sit in a jacuzzi, have a massage, lounge around generally, and uh, improve your wellness. Or there's smoking, which uh, has nothing to do with cigarettes. It's actually a dinner jacket or a tuxedo. I guess possibly from Victorian times when uh, men used to retire to have a cigar and they were still wearing their smokings, as the Swiss call them. And one of my favourites, Tip Top. We probably used that last in England in about 1952. It obviously means super or jolly, jolly fine. Um, I think you'd probably find it in very old fashioned novels, but here you hear it all the time. Things are very tip top a lot of the time. And last but not least, which is another phrase you hear quite often, as along with ladies and gentlemen and happy birthday, is hit, which has nothing to do with uh, someone hitting you or even being a, a hit single in the hit parade. It has to do with being a special offer. So shops and restaurants have hits. And what most restaurants have a Tages hit, which means a dish of the day. The trouble is, in German, it's written as one word, and then it comes out like that which doesn't look that appetizing for any English speaker. It wouldn't entice me into the restaurant. But that's the wonderful thing about living here as an Englishman in Switzerland. You hear all these different uses of English, of English words, and it makes it really interesting to live here and to speak to Swiss people and to see how they use English, how they use it in written, in the newspapers and in books, but also just in, in everyday speech or in adverts or on the news. It's a great uh, facet of living in Switzerland and part that I love.